again welcome to crazy gamers models how's it going this is going to be the intro video for the panther model a late production two in one full interior kit by tacom it is kit number 2099 and this is going to be a build we're going to be doing um it's going to be a build log it's not going to be a build long but you will see my progress as I make it, and any mistakes I make, I will point out to you as they as I come across them, and I'll make a video and point out um, different things for weathering, painting, and things like that. I'll show you um, as much as I can. I'm working on getting something set up for videoing my airbrush station, and also I do giveaways for my builds. Um, model grab bags, things like that for people who participate in the build by liking, subscribing, leaving comments below, engaging with other people who leave comments, um, sharing the videos. If you share the videos, let me know you share them in the comments. It'll put you in for an entry on the in the giveaway. Also, um, I'm currently um, unable to work at this time due to a neck energy in injury and this is about the extent of what I'm able to do so I have set up a patreon page the link will be in the description below and if you so choose to help me out I would greatly appreciate it once I get some people to join patreon I will start doing some giveaways I have tons of Warhammer stuff I'll be giving away um, pre-assembled figures that are magnetized with weapon options is one of the things I'll be giving away. So take take a look at that if you so choose. But now let's get on with this video. Thank you. Okay, let's look at the the Panther A late tier. That was a tag kit, it has a full interior. Um, it has the Maybach 700 horsepower V12 engine that had a governor put on it, so it could only have 600 horsepower because there were so many issues with these vehicles. I absolutely love these German armor, the Panther, the Tiger, um, the King Tiger. I, I love these vehicles. I've already built a Berg Panther. Um, it's on the channel. It's... It was originally going to be a completed model, but I'm now using it as a test bed for other paints and weathering and different techniques. And now I have also, because it's the same chassis as a Panther, I have a understanding on how to build the chassis more effectively. So we're going to go through my build, um, my build steps. We'll take a look at the PE. This I do have the Big Ed PE upgrade set that comes with the interior. Basically, the interior consists of five or six six armor, um, armor ammunition um, racks. A through F on ammunition racks, and then there's a last page that covers the radio, and then there's two styles of radios. There's your three box radio and your two box radio. I am going to do a three box radio for sure. The two box radio P I'm going to save for another project in the future. So we have an exterior kit for the Panther. Basically, it's a bunch of photo etch handles. Um, some racks, some detail for like the wooden block, and the sledgehammer, and this tube says section here. I'm not sure what that tube is. I'm going to look it up and figure it out. But that's that. And then we have the Zimrit. This will get a Zimrit coating. This um, shows up pretty quick. Zimmerit. And then we have here some corrections that need to be made. I've looked through here and I'll point out the corrections as they um, show up. So we take a look at the part list. A lot of sprues. So it's a lot of sprues. I already um, I rebag my sprues and I label them on, on the bag. 
I've washed all the parts with soapy water, hot water, and rinsed them off and let them dry. So the paint sticks better. That was one thing I didn't do to my Burnt Panther. And I had peeling issues in certain sections. So we're going to start off with the hall. We're not going to start off with anything crazy. We're going to start off the hall. We have some stuff we need to remove from the lower section, which I've already taken out. We have some pieces that go on. And we have the transmission. Now the transmission is going to be built. And there's going to be some play in it. So I'm going to build this section. Then I'm going to build this section. And then I'm going to start test fitting the transmission as I build it. So I know if it's all aligned right with the, with the tabs and the floor. And then these panels here are going to be just tacked in the corners with extra thin, very light amount of extra thin, until I get these side ribs on here, and then that will hold them square and straight, and then I can start working on these side panels. And as you notice, there's a highlighted in blue and a PE, that means T10 gets PE in some way, so I would refer back to my PE sheets, and it is the Zimmerit that would go on here. I have gone through these instructions extensively. And then we have to, you know, drill some holes and some stuff. So... I'm surprised we have to drill a hole with that. It's weird. And then we have... The actual transmission going in, which will not happen. I will paint it first. I will learn my lesson from the Berg Panther. Paint it first. And then this, the other side. And then it has this going together with the torsion bars. At this point, I will have the, hall, the bottom section painted hall red. This top section painted hall primer red. <coughs> with some um, of the cream white, the cream wise masked off on there. And then I will have the engine, the transmission painted and weathered. I will have this bar here painted and weathered, the color it needs to be. The torsion bars will be inserted before they're put on this. And then they will be painted um, before I will paint the Mr. Surfacer 1500 with the airbrush because that seems to work better than my last method. And then you have aligning the wheel, wheel arms, which is not the optimum way to do it, but if you leave them on and you let it sit with like moderate weight on it and maybe rubber band it together it, it, it does line them up and then we come to our first correction and basically all this correction says is don't put these back two wheels on because you're going to have issues getting the tracks on that's basically what it is so and then we have 11 here we're going to make all these parts some seats um, some ammo racks, which we're going to paint all the ammo. We're going to use the AK metal, true metal paint. Some stowage boxes. Um, we have the first gauges that have PE on them. So that's whole areas highlighted for PE. Then we have these rear engine bulkheads going in. Driver seat, floor plates going in. As it does, it shows the wheels on. I will not be putting the wheels on at this stage. Uh, the last on the Burnt Panther, they had issues with being crooked. So I will wait until the end to put the, the wheels on so I don't knock them about. So then we have the other bulkhead, the drivetrain, um, a rear bulkhead. 
Then we start the lower deck with the bottom of the turret rig and all these PE ammo boxes. Here we go with that. Mark them all that I need PE for those. Then we come on to the track system. And this is something I forgot to do. What I need to do is... Oh, I don't have my pen on me. This is not correct. This is, after extensive research, this is not correct. So, build these tracks up. I have a whole three videos on the Burke Panther and how I did the tracks. I will do a quick overview when I build them. Also, assemble them this way. It's all, it's all kinds of fun, let me tell you. So, and then there's a correction here. Basically, it's telling you this back wheel we left off in the last correction goes on now after you put the tracks on. You have your tracks and your lower hull complete. And we move over here and we're going to build the engine. Now I recommend having the engine built before you put in the rear bulkheads to make sure that you can line up these two exhaust pipes right here with the holes in the engine and also there's a couple other locating pieces which normally after I I, mean I build mine before I put the rear bulkheads in I'll have them built and just temporarily in place and then I will put these in and then more of the engine I, I will choose to redo these pieces in uh, lead wire because they were it were issues doing these with um, the plastic. It just didn't work out. They weren't in the right location. They were having stuff moved. I'll redo those. Then we have this. Um, I don't even know what that is. I guess it's a water tank. Would not. Then we have the engine going in. Some hosing going in. Then we have the back done. We have some. You know. Here's, here's another thing that, that you, when you put these side panels in, you can have this detail on here of these ammo boxes. So I'll make sure I have that on there. Also, I want to point out that I didn't see in here. I didn't see it put in. So I want to find it. Okay, the, these pieces right here, this E13 and E14, they need to be put in before you even put these sidewalls on because they have, these are hydraulic, or these are grease points, and they just sit on the wall, but they really have tons of pipes that go down and go to all the different torsion bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little pieces of, of lead wire that shoot down and terminate in the floor just to, just to give it that added realism. I noticed that when I was building it and I looked up what they were and it's just, it looks stupid. It looks like maybe it should be ammunition that when you paint the tops of them silver like you're supposed to, it looks like bullets and it just doesn't, it doesn't look right. And as ammo pouches going in, Things like that. There are some things that you can't put in early because they go around the seats and whatnot. This is the armor side skirts. Has your fuel tank and some ammo racks. And then we have the water and water tanks going on. The radiators. Some more. Looks like some sort of storage, stowage. Then we have the back part, which these back tanks get PE, Zimmerit, and this back plate gets Zimmerit. And then we start the upper hull. I'm 
After installing that, we start the upper hall, which gets Zimmerant. I don't know how, I, I, don't, I have to decide where I'm going to put that Zimmerant on. I, re, I marked it PE, PE on these, that, and then starting, this is the, this is the interior painting guide they give you. Like I said, I am doing a restored version of this this panther, so I'll show you what that's going to look like in a minute. So, there is the top hatches. You have two different options for the hatches. I have to look at my reference material, see what we're doing. When I get there, I will. And then I have all the PE tool clamps and pieces and zimmerant for all this stuff. I gotta make sure I pay attention here. There's a lot of PE stuff going on. Same on this side here. More stuff going on the side. Then we have a machine gun being built. And this looks like it is going in the front in the bow. So, for the radio operator. Then we have a gun stabilizer. Some fenders with some more PE. We're attaching the hull, adding the side skirts, which also get pieces of Zimmerit PE. And then the turret, more PE, and turret things. So, and then this is the little exhaust thing, I believe. It's got a gun on the top, which definitely is going to happen, because that is one of the options I want. And then it has the machine gun inside the the turret. The gun that goes on top of the cupola is an anti-aircraft gun, from what I'm told. A raid. I read that. So some more of the turret going together. Now I've never built a turret, so for these panthers, so this is going to be new. But I'm going to take it slow. Not a lot of PE, any PE, hardly in these. So, this is the turret going together. And then there is the final assembly with the antenna. And then here are your paint schemes. Mine is going to be this basic um, yellow color. And because of the restored nature of it. And then it's going to get a mild coat of camo. Now, let me pull out my reference books. Yeah, this is what I'm using for reference. This is the Research Squad Project Panther. It is the Weecroft Collection. He's restoring a Panther A late edition. And I'll show you. Basically, he's restoring it all to new condition and this is how I'm going to build this panther. See here is those parts where I was saying the, the grease nuts, how they have all the pipes that go down. I'm going to try to replicate that in some way on the model instead of just having it an empty section. And this turn, this, this uh, model panther suffered some battle damage that they highlight on this vehicle which I will attempt to do the same. As you can see, see there's some damage in the in the lower hall, which I will do to it. But basically, there, this is the drive train and hall book, and this is basically just pictures of the restoration through the years, 2013. And there's the this is the color I was talking about. This. I think it's called Dunkle Grab or something like that, as you can see. And then this is 2018 restoration stuff. And then this is all stuff, you know. This is the loader. This is the basket that catches the shells. But this is this is a fantastic book of detail. Like here, here is the gearbox insulation. How they put, how they were gonna put it in by sliding it in through the hole. All this stuff here's some technical drawings of how a torsion bar works. Zimmer it tells you the what it was composed of. Oh, 
wood glue and sawdust. Wow, I didn't know that. Here is your hydraulic system. This is your lubrication oil system. And then you have your oil filter. Just, this book is, I, mean, I don't know if it was designed for modelers. I don't think it was. I think it was just designed to illustrate this restoration of this amazing tank. But I'm using it as a base to build this Panther. Because of the photo etch and how detailed the radio is and how nice it is, I didn't want to just build it in that nice condition and then weather it down and then just make it look burnt out or off the factory. So I figured I'd do this restored Panther. And that's what that's what I'm looking to do. So this that is the this is the first part of this um, build. This is just me talking about how I'm going to proceed. Basically at this point I'm just gonna come in here and open up my book to this first page. Here, I want to put my clip on it, and I'm going to go over some tools I'm going to use in the making of this video. First thing I'm going to talk about is part organization. I use this magnetic mount by I fix it. It's a magnetic project mat. And then I use these Mr. Hobby paint trays and they stick. They are magnetized right to it. Now this is a Expo board that has these squares drawn on it. And you just scratch them off of what you need there. So it's nice like that. And the reason that I have this letter lettered A through J on this top section is because TACOM loves to have you build assemblies A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. If you look, A and C are very, very similar. They're different. <coughs> Excuse me. But they're close. So I, I, I cut out all the parts and label them on this bin trying to do 20 pieces. Then I build everything up with those 20 pieces to a completion. And then I'll put the A cup here and I'll put this A part in the A cup. And I'll put this B part in the B cup. And so forth and so on. So then when I get to this final assembly of this transmission, I'll have, you know, up to the H cup or, yeah, up to H filled. And then I'll have you know, two other cups down here with 18 and 19 in it. And I'll be able to assemble this. And then as I assemble it, while it's still tacky, I can just, I can test fit it onto this section I have built previously. So, that's the first thing. I did not get this in the intention of using it for models, but it is become invaluable to these models with multiple pieces. I'm building a 1 16th the Ag Tiger and it it works for that even though the pieces are large but the small pieces. I'm starting a 1 32nd Tempest or one yeah 1 32nd Tempest and it's got teeny tiny pieces teeny tiny photo etch. You cut all that out ahead of time, clean it all up Organize it in the bins and then just start building. So it's great for when you're filming what you're building. You can have everything organized and get to it easily. You're not hunting around for things. Oh, uh, glues. Glues is a, is a is a weird subject for me. I have I have a lot of options for glue. I mainly use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. That's that's my two main two, uh, main two go tos. I also have re decanted some plastic weld into a Tamiya extra empty Tamiya extra thin bottle. It's a hotter glue. It works. It works for a specific thing. 
it's nice to have at certain times. And then I have this on a brush. This is the FlexiFile Plasti Weld. It's for their touch and flow system, which I do not like. But it does work well with a little brush and their little holder. So I have that there in case I need to get into a tight corner with a brush. I have that. I also have some smaller brushes if I need it. Um, and then I also have a, a, a jar of extra thin and quick setting that I use on painted surfaces because it's dirty. And I don't like the dirty up good. I don't like to use dirty glue on clean on clean paint. Um, I do use uh, what is referred to as sprue goo. I have some made with evergreen styrene here to a thin flowing consistency. It beads up. It flows. It's 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 pretty good. And then I have a gap filling. Um, sprue goo that is made from the Tacom sprues. So I use this specifically on Tacom models because it makes it the same consistency as the plastic you're sanding. So it comes in handy. I got it. It's on a brush too. It's on a slightly larger brush. And then I also have Mr. Cement's Deluxe and Mr. Cement S. Haven't used the S yet. Have used the Deluxe. It's great for larger surfaces because it has a bigger brush but it's not too thick because to me a cement in the white jar is thick and it has a big brush but it's too big it's too thick so I put a smaller brush on this one and then I use the Mr. Hobby for larger surfaces so that that covers glue other than super glues I have extra thin medium and then I have a black rubber rubber dye super glue for extra strong joints for cleaning parts for cutting them off the sprues I use a set of Tamiya sharp point for taking them off the sprues and then I use a pair of Tamiya the one two three cutters for cleanup just because I like to make sure these stay sharp so I use them for cleanup only and not cutting big old nubs and sprues uh, for cleanup I use a um, dulled used number 10 scalpel blade for scraping uh, for more cleanup I use a I have a number 10 a that's sharp it's for taking out sprue dubs and recently what I found that I use is not that one. this one right here this is a number 15 it is fantastic for cleaning parts and cutting photo etch. This is my photo etch knife, and I had gotten it for photo etch. It works great for photo etch, but I had like a hard to hard to get to nub, and I was like, hey, let me try this, and I scraped it with this. This is fantastic. I use this one more now than I use the number ten. I mean, I use the the, the dollar number, the used number ten for a lot, but anything I need sharp cuts on, I'll use the new number fifteen on. Other than number 10, you have, I feel like you have a lot more control and things like that. Um, I also have, for general purposes, I have a, a small X-Acto knife blade, you know, for whatever I need on that. I have sanding sticks. Um, I have this, this size sanding stick in different grits. I have these sanding sticks in different grits. I have some rough, flat, hard nail files I get from the nail store where my wife goes I have an assortment of tweezers come in handy I have an assortment of super super skinny sanding sticks and then I have my big boy cup of this is a flat sander it has brushes and wooden pegs a uh, wax pencil in it and so have you, different things like that. And then I also use on a multitude of occasions, I use these trumpeter sanding frames that you double stick tape. These are tibia sponges. I use different tibia sponges. These are micro mesh pads. So 
I use those. I use Flexi Files sandpaper. I have a whole stack of their sandpaper here. It's cleanable. You can use it wet dry. It's like a mesh material. It's fantastic. It's like a polymer film that has grit like bonded to it. It's fantastic. And then I have that I use for filling gaps. I use Mr. Surfacer. I have all three of these Mr. Surfacers. For priming, I'm going to use the Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. And then I also have the Dissolve Putty. And I use this in various ways. If I have to do decals or any kind of glossing, I use this um, Mecca Varnish by Vallejo. This is a satin varnish.